Welcome to the first edition of the newest Let's Play series. That's right, you are reading that top banner correctly. It is Let's Play TNA 2016. And I am in the process of, well, actually, I'm done booking the first episode of TNA Impact of 2016. And also, TNA's debut on Pop TV. And now you might be wondering why exactly I did TNA. See, or I chose to do TNA. See, the reason is twofold. Reason number one, I ran a poll a couple of weeks ago on my Twitter account, which is in the description below, by the way, cheap plug. And I asked... What company should I pick? WCW, TNA, GFW, other. TNA got the most votes. Now I most votes. Now I will say, most of the company, the poll in general, did not get many votes. But in the vote poll, in the votes that it did get, TNA got the most. So that's reason number one why I chose to do TNA. Reason number two is because. I've been waiting to do this Let's Play series for a while, and the reason why I was waiting is because this is also my first series on TEW 2016, the newest installment of the TEW franchise, of the TEW franchise, powered by Grey Dog Software and my favorite game public game maker, Adam Ryland. And no, I am not sponsored by them. But if they want to, I'm all ears. So now, let's jump into this. The first episode of TNA. Or let's play TNA 2016 and the debut of Impact on Pop. The pre-show match kicks off like this with these two men, Rob Echoes and Ross Von Erich. The reason why Ross Von Erich is in the pre-show match and not in a tag team match is because his brother Marshall has not signed yet. So yes, I know some of you would say, wait to use Ross, but I chose to use Ross without Marshall. But either way, it's a pre-show match. Does it really matter? Now... The show kicks off with Josh Matthews and Pope welcoming you to the first episode of TNA Wrestling on Pop Television. And we are backstage, or we are outside of the 2300 Street Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we see the limousine pop come into the shot of South Philadelphia with Dixie Carter getting out of the limo, and walking in to the 2300 Street Arena. I will just say this, that the reason why the the show is in the 2300 Street Arena is because Explosion was taped before it, and I didn't realize that Explosion taped before TNA Impact, and I can't move the show to a different arena because you can't switch arenas and you most certainly can't switch states when you take when you had a show in one arena before in the, on the same day so I can't switch arenas due to the fact that I had a show earlier in the day and that's on me that's my fault for not looking and seeing that explosion was taped on the same day but after this episode I will be switching impact I mean I will be switching explosion because it doesn't really matter when explosion is taped so it's not taped on the same day so I can bring impact to bigger arenas but either way Josh Matthews and Pope build up the reason behind Dixie being here tonight what could it be? And they also build up the start of the TNA World Title Tournament, which kicks off tonight. 
Not a really good, not a really good way to kick off this show. As Jesse Goddard and Chris Melendez kick off the show in what was a disappointing match, or as the game calls it, a terrible match. As Jesse's in-ring performance was subpar, and Chris's in-ring performance was terrible. Now we move forward, and the video plays as uh, showing highlights of. Lance Hoyt and Harry Smith debut in TNA when they took out the Wolves, which happened on Explosion, and you will see on Explosion as uh, Smith and Hoyt attack the Wolves after their match on Explosion in the main event. As they main evented Explosion against the debuting Beaver Boys. Oh, Jesus. None of them really did that good. But either way, Smith and Lance decimate Justice Payne and Javier, dominating them. And Javier was the weak link, struggling to keep up with everyone else in ring performance, which, as you can see, hurt the match very, very much. And due to the attack earlier on the tape in the taping, the Wolves are not coming out to come face to face with Harry and Lance. You'll just have to wait for the Wolves' response to the to their beat down, to the beat down as they are not here, are not going to show up on this impact taping due to selling the beat down. So you just hear from Lance and Harry as Lance and Harry talk up who they are and their accomplishments and where they come from and the fact that they are the current GHC Tag Team Champions. And if you don't know what GHC means, they are the Tag Team Champions in Pro Wrestling NOAH and one of the most dominant teams in Japanese wrestling today. And now they're bringing it to TNA to add another Tag Team title to their list of achievements. And now we move to a, a vignette hi, uh, promoting the debut of the prodigy. And what this kid says in the in the vignette you see a, a picture of him when he was younger and he says I started wrestling when I was 16 years old. I was trained by one of the greats of this business in Keller Kowalski up in Boston. I am born to do this. I've been wrestling for 14 years and I am only 29 years old. Nobody is better at this than me, and sooner or later, everyone will know the truth that I am a prodigy. The announcers, uh, Josh Matthews and Pope, put over the main event, Abyss versus Jeff Hardy, in, round, in the round one match for the D TNA World Heavyweight Title Tournament. But also, you will see, well, actually you'll see this, as Madison Rain and Awesome Kong thus far have had the best match of the night, with Madison Rain getting the victory over Kong, and Kong having the best in-ring performance of the night, and this match getting the crowd, heating up the crowd, as it, perfect, as it works out perfectly, because now we're going into... The bigger matches. Now Tyrus comes out. And Tyrus issues an open challenge to anybody backstage. It is accepted by Eli Drake. And look at the rating. 43. And Eli Drake and Tyrus are said to have great chemistry. And it showed in their performances. I can't imagine if they didn't have great chemistry. What the match would have gotten. Now we jump backstage with Eric Young, who's standing by with Jeremy Borash, 
and Eric Young is talking about his round one tournament match against Rockstar Spud. EY says he used to be champion and he wants to taste gold once again and he'll do and he'll get that opportunity when he decimates the joke of TNA tonight. Before the match, Spud talks up how he has been underestimated his entire career and tonight's no different. EY, you should know better than to underestimate somebody considering people have been underestimating you your entire career. And speaking of underestimating somebody, Rockstar Spud gets a, f gets a surprise win over Eric Young and that means, yes, Spud advances in the tournament to crown the new TNA World's Heavyweight Champion. And EY is pissed. EY throws a temper tantrum after the match. And Spud, as Spud, just got a surprise roll-up on EY to get the victory. And either way, EY's out and Spud is in. Speaking of a tournament match, next week you will see Bram against Bobby Roode because the point of this tournament is to place former champions against people who have never won the belt like Spud and EY, Bram and Bobby Roode. Well, the only one that doesn't happen is Abyss and Jeff Hardy because there isn't enough people capable of being in the tournament that haven't won the title uh, against people who have won the title. So, yeah. But yes, next week you will see Bram versus Bobby Roode, EC3 versus Drew Galloway, as EC3 has a solid promo building up his match next week against Drew Galloway. And this tournament comes to a head in two weeks on pay-per-view, at one night only, a champion is crowned. That is correct. The first one night only pay-per-view for TNA this month is, I mean this year, is one night only a champion is crowned because a champion will be crowned on pay-per-view in two weeks at one night only. Now in the main event, you see Jeff Hardy against Abyss. Abyss and Jeff Hardy, of course, have great, uh, good chemistry. They're revisiting one of the most storied rivalries in TNA as Jeff Hardy advances in the tournament <coughs> with... Um, with uh, uh, Rockstar Spud and Abyss is out of the tournament but Jeff Hardy is still in and speaking of a tournament match that happens next week on Impact Kurt Angle versus Matt Hardy is set for next week on Impact so that means EC3 versus Drew Galloway Angle, Hardy Um, Angle, Hardy, and Bram, and Bobby Roode, and also Lashley will be in action to try, as Lashley is going to try and recapture his TNA World Heavyweight title. As it, Lashley will also be in the TNA World Title Tournament. But that's next week. This week isn't over yet, as now Dixie Carter comes out following Angle's promo about him versus Matt Hardy, or him against Hardy. Dixie comes out and is ready to announce, or ready to disclose why she's here in Philadelphia. And Dixie starts talking. She's talking about how well, she makes one big announcement, and the big announcement is that next week on Impact, we will have a battle royal to crown the first ever TNA Heritage Champion. As they decided to make a new championship belt here in TNA. But then Dixie Carter goes on to say, start talking about TNA's legacy 
and TNA's history. That's right, WWE isn't the only one that can talk about legacy. And Dixie starts talking about her legacy. And then she starts... This is an unscripted promo, of course. Um, And Dixie starts talking... I know I've made some mistakes. I know this company may have not lived up to its potential just yet. I know this company may not be in the position that we thought it would be. But I'm not going to give up on this company as long as you're not going to give up on this company. And that is what will keep this company... Raven, Raven, the lights go out, and Raven ends up in the ring to the shock of everyone in Philadelphia. That's right, Philadelphia, Raven, the crowd goes crazy because when was the last time they saw the ECW legend in Raven? When was the last time Dixie Carter saw Raven? I'll tell you, it was six years ago when TNA did their own ECW reunion, Hardcore Justice, anyone. EC, EV 2.0. But Raven is here. He cuts Dixie Carter off and tells Dixie, Dixie, your time has come and gone. It isn't about you giving up on the company. It's about you giving up that you can help the company. And you giving the reins to someone else. You telling someone else, it's your company now. Take it. Because I can't do it anymore. These people may not have given up on TNA. But... Think back. Think back. Because I remember when I first showed up in this company, and I remember a company that had potential to be something special because it was the alternative. Because it was different. Because it wasn't what they were doing up in New York. Up in the WWE, this was different. TNA used to stand for something. Now it stands for comedy relief. Dixie, it's against my nature to not want the underdog to succeed because I was a part of the biggest underdog company in the history of pro wrestling and I helped made something happen in this very arena so I know a thing or two about underdog companies so I don't want TNA to die and I know you don't want TNA to die but if you don't do something to change this company it will die and that's not something any of us want no matter the critics no matter the talent no matter the money none of us want to see TNA go bye bye because that's happened before and it didn't work out. So Dixie, when you go back there, when you go back to your hotel, when you go back to that nice office you have in TNA headquarters, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you still the one? Are you still the one to run this company? Are you still who the company needs? Because you've lost out on opportunities. You've lost out on great wrestling minds. You screwed up. But the company always survived. What now, Dixie? Because you and I both know this company won't last forever in the shape that it's in. Because it's, hem it's hemorrhaging more talent than WCW did money. 
The roster turnover is just as bad as ECW, as is the money. Or is it? You don't want us to jump to conclusion, Dixie? Then come out and say what is up. Come out and tell us the truth. What's wrong with TNA? And admit... You don't have to admit it to us, but admit it to yourself. Because maybe you're not the one to run it anymore. Quote the Raven. Nevermore. And right then and there, Raven leaves. Lights go out, Raven's gone. Dixie's just standing in the ring, shocked. She can't believe that happened. She doesn't understand what to think. She can't she she can't grasp what was just said. And the show goes off the air right then and there. The show goes to black. You hear Josh say, What's going to happen next week? What a way to debut. Show goes black. Was it a crappy show? I don't know, you tell me. Yeah, the general feeling is I don't have enough interesting storylines. Yes, I don't... I didn't... There weren't enough attractive women on the show. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we increased our popularity in four regions. So even though we got a 50 on the show, we still increased our popularity, and that's what matters. A bad show, but now what are you going to do? Can't start everything on the, you know, on a high note. But I can say this. Just because we didn't kick off on a high note doesn't mean we won't build to a high note. Because as a certain former TNA booker once said, things won't change in a day. It takes time to change a company, especially a company as broken as TNA. But, as you can tell, Impact's over for this week. Let me know down in the comment section if you enjoyed the show. What was your favorite part? What was your least favorite part? What you think I could have done better? Or what you would have done different if you were me? If you want to see more like this, then feel free to like the video or subscribe to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. Disclaimer, this is not directed at it. It's a storyline for the video purposes for video purposes only. No intention directed at TNA. This is for video purposes only. So please be mindful of that. And in with that being the case, see you next time. For another video. Later.